Welcome everyone to tonight's spotlight. Um, we're going to have a, a short but interesting conversation with one of our amazing uh, 3L students who also um, wears a lot of hats here at Southwestern. Um, joining us tonight are also going to be a few other admissions ambassadors. So I'm gonna let them say a quick hello and they will be available to you all in the chat. Um, so let's first start with Emily. Hi, yeah, I'm Emily. I am a traditional 3L student. Um, I'm interested in entertainment law. I um, work for the admissions office, obviously, and um, I'm on the peer mentor and dean's fellow committees. Um, and then I also am on law review. So if you guys have any questions about student life, I, I also work at the um, on campus housing. So if you guys have any questions about that, um, feel free to hit me up in the chat. Thank you, Emily. Now let's go to Tiffany. Hello everyone. I am also a 3L traditional day student. I am also interested in entertainment. I am vice president of the Entertainment Law Society here at Southwestern and I'm also a clinician at the Entertainment Law Clinic here at Southwestern. I also work at the library and obviously an admissions ambassador so really interested in um, meeting you guys and answering any questions. Thank you Tiffany. Uh, Christy. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Christy McLeod. I am a 2L day student. Um, I'm obviously working in the admissions and I am the fundraising coordinator for Women's Law Association. I also am the student liaison for the Women, Women Lawyers Association of Los Angeles. It's a mouthful, but um, they call it Walala. And then I also work right now at um, an externship for employment law. So if you have any questions on that round, please feel free to hit me up in the chat. Thank you, Christy. And last but not least, let's go to Kimberly. Hi, everyone. I'm Kimberly. I'm a 4L in the part time evening program. Um, so, like most of our evening students, I do work full time. I work at the city attorney's office for the city of LA. Um, and on campus, I'm a dean's fellow, a writing fellow. Uh, Emily and I are both notes and comments editors for the law review and I TA for a couple um, professors that teach first year subjects. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you, Kimberly. And um, I, for, I neglected to actually introduce myself. Uh, my name is Lisa Gear, and I'm the Dean of Admissions at Southwestern. Um, and it's my pleasure to um, be featuring tonight Fabiola Martinez. I mentioned she is a 3L student. And in case you're not familiar with the vernacular, that we're talking about. Um, first year students are called 1Ls, second year 2Ls, 3Ls are their full-time day students in their final year. And Kimberly is in her fourth year, um, her final year as a part-time student. Um, so sometimes we take for granted that people know all the terminology, but um, just so you know, we have uh, several students here who are gonna be graduating in just a few months. So um, they are all poised to do amazing new things in their next chapters. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over now to Fabiola so that she can tell you a little bit about herself and then we'll dive into some questions. I have some questions, of course, but um, we really also want to hear from you all. So jot down your questions for Fabiola and um, you can raise your Zoom hand um, or come on camera and raise your real hand and I'll call on you. So with that, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, Fabiola. Sure. Hi everyone, thanks so much for coming. I was like, oh my God, no one's gonna come. <laughs> But um, I'm really excited to be here and talk to you all um, about my experience. So I am a 3L, as Dean Gear said. Um, I first want to say that I'm not one of those people that are like, I've always wanted to be a lawyer. Like, this has been my dream forever. And like, I think that's okay. I feel like that's what you hear a lot. Um, and so for me, I've just been figuring it out. Um, and so for undergrad, um, I went to UC Berkeley and I graduated in 2017. And so I took two years off. Um, and during that time I worked and I took the LSAT and I did like the whole application process. So for me, <clears throat> I was working full time when I was doing that. And it was really, really hard. Like I really wish, like I don't think people realize what an advantage and privilege it is to be able to take the time off and you know do the LSAT because like I've never been a good like standardized test taker. So I was super nervous about the LSAT, um, especially working full time, like I was exhausted. But, um, you know, I just knew I had to make the best of my own situation. Like it's not gonna change. Like, you know, we all have our own 
things that we have to deal with. So I think that was one of my biggest um, like hurdles trying to get into law school in the first place. Uh, so I took two years off and while um, the two gap years, I was working um, in San Francisco the um, organization is called Public Advocates. So what they do is like public interest law um, focused on like affordable housing um, and then um, school finance, like equity. And so even though it's based in San Francisco, they do work all across um, California. So that's really great. And um, when I started there, I kind of started knowing like, okay, I think I want to go to law school, which is why I was looking at like jobs at law firms. Um, and I always knew that I would do, you know, public interest. Um, so I guess to backtrack on that, um, like undergrad is what really opened my eyes to like what I want to do. I was just like, you know, this world kind of sucks sometimes and I want to like play my role to make it better. Um, and so I always knew that I wanted to advocate for my community in some way. I just wasn't sure like how. Um, and so one of the things that always has been important to me though is like women's rights. So I was like, okay, um, I know I wanna go to law school. I'm gonna start out in like the family law area. So um, that was like one of my first like motivating factors or like drivers. Um, and so, you know, did the application process, got through it, that was really hard. Um, but it was worth it. Southwestern is actually the first school I got into and I was like super excited. I was like with my friends and it was just such a great, um, just great moment. But, um, and so after 1L, well, okay, starting in 1L, um, you can't really join any boards yet, but however, you can get kind of like a taste of it by being um, a representative for a student organization. So, um, you know, I'm just thinking about how, what Lisa said that like not everyone knows the law school lingo or anything, but basically when you start law school your first year, um, there's about three sections. So there's like A, B, C, and depending on which section you're in, you have like every single class with that person or with that whole class. So you'll have like four classes um, and you see the same people like every day. Um, so what that means is like if you there's like the public interest law committee. I knew I wanted to be involved with them. And so you can be like your section's representative and like, you don't do much, but <laughs> you like give announcements. You're kind of like a liaison between like the organization um, and your section and just trying to promote events. Um, so that was really like the first kind of like taste into some kind of leadership role. Um, and so I think a lot of students always ask like, oh, how many like, orgs did you do in your first year or like were you in leadership positions like you can't even be in a leadership position in your first year because like it happens in the spring when you do like elections and everything um so that is just one way to like get involved and get to know people um and so now just like I mean and I have been a COVID student so that was really crazy if you guys have any questions about that I'm happy to answer but um so half of my law school was remote, which is really crazy to think. Um, but during that time, um, I always knew that one of my goals, um, so Southwestern has three honors programs for like the practical skills. So there's moot court, which is like appellate, there's trial advocacy, which I think most people are like familiar with like trial ad. Um, and then there's the negotiation honors program, which is just like, two on two negotiating each other. And so my friend and I um, who started law school together, we're like, you know, we really wanna do NHP, we're gonna do it. And like, I'm just really excited that like we both made the team. Um, and so that has actually been one of my highlights. Um, you know, really excited to be able to say I had this goal and I reached it and it's been so great. Um, like one of the things that Southwestern is really known for too is like having students that are really good with hands-on work. And that's one of the things that, you know, one of the skills that I'm developing in NHP. Um, and so this year, basically I, I'm on a few boards. Um, so I am on the board of the National Lawyers Guild. That is, um, I guess, to give us a quick overview, it's like the oldest, um, most progressive bar association in the country. It was the first bar association to be integrated. So it's very social justice oriented. Um, a lot of like court watch, um, doing like 
legal observer. So like, you know, you go to a protest and you just make sure that, um, you know, law enforcement, everyone is behaving. Um, and then I'm also on the board of the Homelessness Prevention Law Project, um, which is in like the same, you'll see like the same people <laughs> in these spaces, you know, like I think in any law school, the public interest community is always going to be a little smaller than like the rest. And so a lot of the boards really overlap. Um, and so I'm not, I'm on that board as well. And so basically we just do a lot of outreach um, with like, you know, the houseless folks in our community. And so one of the things that Jeff, our, um, our president does is a lot of water drops. So like you'll take a lot of water and you take it to the community and, you know, just let them do what, what they need with it. Um, and then I'm, you know, I'm an NHP, which I mentioned. I'm also an admissions ambassador. So um, I work the admissions office with Dean Gear, and I'm a peer mentor. I think that's, I think I hit all the things. <laughs> I think you did. I think you hit all the things. Those are a lot of hats. Um, well, gosh, okay. So I wanna take you several years back, um, probably actually before your two gap years. So, um, you know, tell the group a little bit about, um, you know, kind of where you were at leaving college. Did you know you wanted to go to law school um, or was there something that, you know, happened during your gap period where, you know, you really found that motivation? Because uh, I know you were working and, you know, um, doing a lot of other things during that period, you know, when you made the decision to actually apply and, and, and uh, go through the LSAT and, and whatnot. But, um, what was kind of your thought process when you left school? Did, is this something, well, I know you said you didn't always know, but when did that really trigger for you? Um, I feel like it started happening in undergrad, like around my third year. Like, I feel like there was like something that was like, you know, maybe law, well, maybe the legal career would be good. But I feel like I always kind of shut that down because I was scared. I was like, that sounds too hard. I can't do the LSAT. Like no one in my family has done this. Like, you know, my father didn't even graduate from high school. My mom doesn't speak English. Like I was just like, I'm on my own. Um, so I think to even start there, like the biggest thing for me was to find mentors um, and especially mentors of color. Like it does make a difference for me and our experiences. So um, I think that was like the first hurdle for me. It's just not even knowing who to talk to. Um, and then my senior year of college, I took um, the course is called prisons and basically just learn about the prison system and like just so many things that are wrong with it. Um, and I really befriended the professor and like, I felt comfortable enough to go to her and be like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. <laughs> like, these are the things I'm interested in, but like, you know, what do you do? And so I think talking to a lot of people was definitely helpful. And so by the time I graduated, I was already like, okay, I think I want to go to law school, which is why when I was looking for jobs, I was like looking for jobs in like the legal market. However, you know, just trying to get some experience, trying to know what that even entails. Um, and I'm so blessed to have gotten the job that I did. You know, it was like public interest, these social justice, like, just like in the heart of San Francisco and like just did all the work that I'm passionate about. And I learned so much about those attorneys. Um, a lot of it is movement lawyering. So you're really like connected with the folks on the ground. And so that was really, really powerful for me to see, um, to see what it's like to like have your work guided by the actual people and not like one client by like this community. Um, and so I was like, okay, this is like, this is what I wanna do. Um, and then, of course, having those attorneys as mentors, like, really helped me um, be like, okay, yeah, I think I'm going to apply law school, and, you know, them giving me tips, and it all kind of just came together. And I also, it sounds kind of silly, but um, I read Sonia Sotomayor's My Beloved World, and, and I, which is her autobiography, and, like, it just resonated so much with me, and I was like, I can do it. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to do it. Um, and here I am now, 3L. I just bought my bar prep course and that hurt. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm like, now I'm here, did that. I'm sure that uh, it's gotta be surreal, right? You're almost at the end, um, as many of our ambassadors are here tonight. And uh, yeah, I know, you know, it's, uh, it's so bittersweet, I'm sure. So 
I, I know in your bio, and you spoke a little bit about it too, that you're a first gen student. Um, have you, you know, been able to connect with other first gen students at Southwestern, you know, especially given what a large um, representation of our community, you know, that entails? Is that also been, you know, part of, part of your journey at Southwestern? I would say yes, definitely. Like most of my close friends are actually first gen students. I just, for me, it just felt really easy to connect. And that's not to say don't try to hang out with other people. Um, it just happened naturally, um, especially, you know, Southwestern is actually really, really diverse. And a lot of that diversity comes with being like first gen students as well. Um, and so, you know, I've met these friends through just like class or even um, through like some of the organizations like the public interest law committee that I mentioned um, and even this year getting closer to people on the boards that I'm with that I didn't really talk to that much before um, so you really like find your people and the biggest thing is that like you need to actually try though <laughs> like you know when now like I was like okay I'm just gonna get friends but like you need to make an effort it will come to you when you try um, and so I think that was the biggest thing but I definitely have people that I felt like um, have been like my rocks here. That's great. Um, so if the audience has any questions, feel free to put your Zoom hand up um, to ask Fabiola. Also I'm seeing just a little bit of chatter in the chat. Um, so don't be shy there either. We have our ambassadors ready to, to help you with any of your questions. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and keep going. So I know you serve um, as a peer mentor. Um, how important has mentorship been um, in your law school journey, um, both um, you know, at one point when you were a mentee and then now serving as a mentor? And how do you go about rec you know, encouraging students to really seek out mentor relationships? Yeah, I think that's key um, because you can tell people all the time, you need mentors, you know, it's so important, it'll get you places. But I feel like that goes back to what I was saying that it really has to come from yourself and like knowing that this is so actually really important for your future. And so for me, mentorship started when I was applying, like I mentioned earlier, that was like the biggest, I think, I think that's what made the biggest difference for me, the mentorship at that stage. Um, but it's been important now as well. Um, so after 1L, I worked with the Harriet Butte High Center for Family Law. And so they do a lot of domestic violence work, like um, DV restraining orders, like custody visitation, all of that. Um, and my, I actually worked throughout the summer um, closely with the executive director. And she just kind of like, because of my prior work experience, she was like, oh, I just really trust you to be able to do this work with me. And so um, she's really become a mentor, like almost two years later, we still talk all the time. She's invited me to do other projects with her that are actually not necessarily legal, but it's like a lot of community outreach. And so I've been like doing a lot of outreach with her to try to get um, <clears throat> their services basically advertised more throughout LA County. And so to get, you know, there's a lot of people that don't know about the center. And then unfortunately with COVID, there was a really big spike in domestic violence cases. So I just felt like I was doing, it just felt very powerful to be doing that work when it was really, really needed. Um, and so my point of that was just Betty um, being my mentor there. Um, and, and, you know, that takes work as well, being able to, you know, keep, keep in contact with them, say hello. Um, and now last semester, I took um, critical race theory. Southwestern does offer it as well in the spring. And so I took that with Professor Vasquez. And now I have, um, I'm doing the community lawyering clinic with her, which is also like a movement learning type of thing. Um, and she also teaches a, um, the, the clinic, which comes with the course. And so she's really become like a mentor to me as well. Like um, interested in the same thing. She's also Latina. Um, and so it's been really great to really have her um, as like a person, like I could tell how much she believes in me and that means a lot to me too. And she's brought opportunities to me. And so that only came with me being close with her, you know, like for example, um, over the summer, I helped with the, another professor with the fact sheet and 
I was like, I don't even know how they got my info, but I guess like Professor Vasquez and um, Michelle, who's like the director of our public service um, center, were like, oh, Fabiola would be a good fit for this. And I was like, oh, cool. Like this is, it was awesome. Um, so it's like really great to have things like just fall in your lap because of the connections that you have. Um, and then this isn't necessarily like mentorship, but um, in the connection sphere, like I have a friend, um, she, I, so what I really wanna do is employment law, like representing workers. Um, and this friend is the same. And basically like, I had been wanting to like work at that firm for a while. And I was like, hey, if you guys have an opening, like, let me know, let me know. And like, they finally did. And, you know, I like interviewed and like, he offered me the position on the spot. And like, he was like, you know, a friend of Alex is a friend of ours. Like, so it goes a really long way. Like those connections that you make. And like, obviously, of course, like I had my resume, I interviewed, but that um, recommendation held weight as well. So, um, you know, it's just really important to like try. And again, like, I feel like one now I wasn't as good at that, but um, definitely had to pick it up, especially towards the end of law school. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's so important, but so intimidating, I think, to a lot of people. Um, it's just like, you know, generally networking itself is, is very intimidating. So let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, the semester and a few odd weeks that you have left before graduation. Um, is there something that, um, you know, you're really looking forward to doing in your last, you know, few months as a law student um, before you start preparing for the bar and you know, sitting for the bar and all of those exciting and stressful things that come with that territory? <laughs> um, yeah. what, what's kind of on your, you know, wish list uh, before you graduate? Um, I think one of the things on my wish list was having one professor that I wanted to connect with, which I have like been doing, you know, professor I just mentioned, Professor Vasquez. Um, and then also I think honestly enjoying being a student. Um, I've, I've been thinking about this a lot recently actually. So this isn't like a super law school <laughs> answer, but you know, if when I graduate, like this is it for me, I'm not going back to school. Um, so I think just like, seeing how much I can push myself um, and do the best that I can in this last year. I think I've been like a little existential, like, oh my God, did I do everything I wanted to do? Like, I only have like 10 months left. Um, so I think just fo being focused on the now and not too stressed of like the bar and everything, cause like that will all happen so fast. And like right now, um, so in 3L or 4L, if you're a part-time student, um, we have bar prep classes that are built into our coursework. So right now I'm taking the MBE class. And so it it's kind of stressful to be like, oh, I'm already kind of starting the preparation process, um, but just trying to like enjoy being a student um, and just keep working hard, honestly. I'm so glad you're taking that approach. You know, it's a it's a really exciting time and, and it's easy to get caught up in all the things that are coming. So I think it's really great. You're trying to relish the small moments. Uh, does our audience have any questions for Fabiola that you'd like to ask? Go ahead, Vanessa. Hi, Fabiola. My name is Vanessa. I'm an undergrad in my fourth year. I'm a senior um, here at UCR. I'm majoring in sociology and political science. So when I heard you kind of talk about your identities being a Latina, first gen, and your interest being in public, like interest in public service, um, I have really resonated with that because ironically enough, I'm also Latina, I'm also first gen, <laughs> and I'm also interested in public law. So with that being said, like, um, what's the best piece of advice you can give someone like me who's also very similarly, you know, to you and is barely like initiating this process of like, you know, pursuing law, which like you said, is very intimidating, very scary. So what would something you think you would give like as advice? So for starters, I want to say that I'm also from the IE. Well, I don't know if you're from there, but <laughs> you go to the UCR, but I'm from the IE. Um, and I would just say definitely stay committed to like why you want to go to law school and also just like block out the noise. I feel like I wish I would have done that more. Like you'll have people being like, um, you have to do this, you have to do this, or you have to do that. Or like, I just like all over the place. You'll, or you'll hear even lawyers being like, are you sure you want to go to law school? And like, just don't 
let that get into your head because we all have our different reasons. And then like once you're in law school, that doesn't really stop. Like you have people being like, oh, well now you have to like get on law review and I have to do all this. Like, and yeah, those things are great. But um, I think the biggest thing is just focusing on like what you want and what you want to do in your interests because it's not gonna be the same across the board. And also knowing like what you're capable of for yourself. Like if, you know, you can't be the person that's studying 24 seven, like that's okay. And like, you'll see a lot of that. And I think, and it's not just Southwestern, it's just like the legal, you know, profession in general. And like, hopefully that can start changing soon. Um, and so that's one of the things I wanna do too, is just like playing a role in like, changing the dynamics of like what the legal profession is and diversifying it more um but yeah my biggest piece of advice is just like I'm rambling but to really like stay in your lane and just like not listen to other people stay committed to your why because the application process is hard and then law school itself is so hard like what now I think is the most removed from like what you want to do because they're like the foundational courses that you're just like what is this? I don't even know when I'm going to use this, but like you kind of just have to use those. And so for me, just remembering why I wanted to go to law school in the first place is what really helped me, you know, get through that. And seek mentorship, however you can. I think that was has been like one of the biggest keys for me. Thank you so much. I think Vanessa, you have a built-in uh, mentor here with Fabiola tonight. Uh, since, I'm gonna put my email in the chat for since me. you're basically walking in her <laughs> footsteps, <laughs> and those are good footsteps to follow. So I think you're going to be in good hands. And and I do just want to say, you know, if, if Vanessa, to your question, and for others that, you know, regardless of your circumstance, but are you know, intimidated about this process and maybe don't feel like, even if you're not first gen, but especially for our first gen students, when maybe you don't really know how, how to keep yourself motivated when there are seemingly so many obstacles, stuff like this, honestly, these are huge steps that you're taking for yourself. The more you learn about schools, the more you learn about what you can do with a career, um, you know, after law school, all of those things are going to be that like internal motivation that you need. And, you know, for many people, it's also helping their families and helping their communities, right? And that's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure to take on. And, you know, law school is very expensive and that's also very daunting. So there's a lot of things. And I would just encourage you to not be too overwhelmed by all of it at one time, right? Just kind of chip away. And as you continue to figure this stuff out in your journey, you know, utilize myself, the ambassadors, you know, other folks in the admissions office and other admissions offices at whatever schools that you're considering to help you, you know, try to get that information that you're going to need in order to make your decisions, because um, you want to make a good decision for yourself. And, you know, I think for whatever reason, people like to give a lot of unsolicited advice. So, you know, when you're, as you continue down this road, right, and here I am giving you advice anyways, but um, I, I see the irony in that, don't worry. But as you, you know, continue down this path, you're going to want to ask people, your friends, your family, that's natural and that makes perfect sense. But at some point, I encourage you to just tune them all out. You know, this is kind of what Fabiola was saying, just keep your blinders on, tune them all out, focus on what you think is gonna be best for you in the end. And I'm confident you'll make good decisions if you do that. Um, there's a really great um, question in the chat. Um, so do you wanna- Amber's question? <clears throat> Is that the one you're talking about, Fabiola yeah, yeah. Ambers? Yeah, I got it. So um, I definitely think that in general, like law schools and again, like just the dominant legal narrative all does focus on like um, defense, which would be like representing employers. But um, at Southwestern, we actually just got the labor and employment um, emphasis, which is really great. I think that started last year through a petition. So, you know, <clears throat> just to plug in, like, you can always start something that you want. Like, if you want to start a <clears throat> new student org, you can do that. If you want a new concentration, you know, clearly we were able to do that. But um, I would say it's not, like here, it's not necessarily focused on one side or the other at all. It's pretty neutral. Um, so I've taken a few classes. So last year, <clears throat> I took employment discrimination 
which is obviously like super helpful. That's where a lot of the employment law work is. And so that had to do with like disability, um, you know, discrimination for race, gender, sex. Um, and so that I think is really helpful. Well, obviously for both sides, but um, especially if you wanna represent workers. And then I'm taking labor law right now. And so, you know, we do have like a few courses that help with that, but a lot of what, um, if you really want to get that experience and know what it's like to represent workers, you know, that really comes with practical experience. So like once I knew that I wanted to do employment law, um, I was like, okay, I want to try to get a job in this. And so I actually got a job with a solo practitioner who represented workers. And he was also a Southwestern alum. So we're like, hey, you know, it's always great. There's a lot of alum in Southwestern. That's one of the great things about being here in LA that our Southwestern alum. Um, so I did that, started getting like my hands-on experience, knew that that's what I wanted to do. Um, and then there's um, there's a national like, or it's, it's a fund, it's called the Peggy Browning Fund. Um, and they basically fund fellowships for students. And so I guess to backtrack, it's really hard being a public interest student because jobs are not paid. <laughs> so when you are in the summer, it's 10 weeks. And you know, it's not that they don't wanna pay you, it's just not like in the budget, you know, the way it works. And so, um, Thankfully, though, we have the public interest law committee. And so there's like fundraising through that. And you can basically apply for a grant. And it's like four or five thousand dollars for the summer. So you just have to be involved and like help with the fundraising. Um, <clears throat> so the reason I mentioned that is because um, this fund like funds fellowships for like law students to be able to do, you know, labor and employment law in the summer without that worry. Um, of being like, how am I going to pay for this? And without having the extra step of having to apply through school. And so um, this past summer, I worked um, at the Washington Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights and Urban Affairs. It's so long. <laughs> it's in Washington, D.C. Um, but, you know, it was on Zoom. So that was really great because, you know, I feel like there's pros and cons to all this COVID stuff. Um, and so this was kind of a pro because, I don't think I would have wanted to like go to DC just because it's like so expensive and you know thinking about all those things. So it was a really great opportunity to be able to do that online and have that paid for. You know, um, the I think it's the minimum for any org is six thousand, and so some organizations will like add on to that. And so it's really great because it's like one centralized place, and you basically just like send all your apps, and the coordinator like gets back to you and you like interview with everyone who selects you. Um, so that was like something that for anyone interested in workers' rights, definitely keep that on like your radar. So it's called the Peggy Browning Fund. Um, and so you'll probably see that around because especially if you go to Southwestern, um, we have like the Labor and Employment Law Association and they like advertise that as well. <clears throat> so I would say, um, a lot of like if you want that perspective you're gonna really have to get it through like hands-on experience so trying to find however you know you can get even like if you're volunteering for example um there's an organization by campus it's called bet bet the deck um and they have a workers rights clinic and so basically you just like interview um like the potential clients and just like talk to an attorney and then you give them advice so that is one very easy way to get um like experience you know talking to workers and like seeing what kind of issues come up so i hope that helped i don't know if that was helpful thank you fabiola um okay so we have about 10 minutes left there's a couple more questions in the chat here for you so the next one is going to be sarai um, asking if you could talk a little bit more about your work with the homelessness prevention uh, law project. Yeah, so <clears throat> oh, goodness. go ahead and grab some water. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's actually one of the smaller orgs on campus. Um, and like a lot of it. So some orgs are like really student focused, but ours is community focused. Um, and so a lot of like what I mentioned, for example, our president. Um, We'll try to get like people to donate water. We'll have like certain drives that they do. Um, 
a lot of like, um, like educational webinars that we do. So we just had like um, a, a former Southwestern student speak about like um, all the different like rent things that are going on in LA and it's so confusing. Like, and so just giving information on that so that we can be, you know, prepared to answer questions for people as well. So it's a mix of like community outreach and also just like educational um, stuff for students as well. So like, um, so NLG, which is the National Lawyers Guild and Homeless Prevention Law Project partner a lot. Um, and so this weekend there was like this event called um, Disorientation and it was basically just like a full day retreat, like learning with other like like-minded attorneys. Um, they're like really progressive. And so there's just a lot of opportunities like that to network and get to know others um, as well. Um, and I did want to really address the fiscal barriers question because that has probably been my biggest barrier so far in law school. I 100% pay for my rent, my tuition, my life <laughs> living um, through loans and scholarships. Like I don't have that financial support from my parents, not because they don't want to, but because they can't. Um, and so, I mean, it's been really difficult. I feel like there's a lot of pressure, um, like Lisa was saying about, or Dinger about like wanting to do better for your family. And like, and it's really hard having all that pressure on your shoulders as well. Um, you know, knowing you're the, like I'm the only one of my siblings who went to college. So I just feel like it is a lot of pressure. And then right now, like not even having money, but like family, just not understanding how I'm getting money then. I'm <laughs> like, it's loans, it's all loans. And they think I'm just like loaded. And it's just like really, it's really hard on so many levels. Like one, obviously the financial aspect, just so stressful. You know, like a lot of people take out tuition, like loans for tuition. And, you know, I have to take out like an extra, you know, 20 K just to live per year. And I'm not afraid to say that because I feel like people need to, you know, talk about that more because it is, it's real, um, especially for those of us who, you know, don't have that much money. So I would say like my biggest thing is just apply to a bunch of scholarships. Like it can feel like hard sometimes because you're like, oh, I applied to all these and I didn't get any of them. But, you know, there is a lot of people out there and I've gotten a few that I'm like, wow, I didn't think I was gonna get this. So <clears throat> in LA, one of the biggest foundations um, for like Latinos is the Mexican American Bar Foundation. And they actually, um, every year they give out like 30 scholarships and they're like really good scholarships. So um, it's really nice to have like those kind of support. And there's also like the Latina Lawyers Bar Association, um, the Women's Law Association has of LA has scholarship. So there's so many things um, that you can like look into in the community. And then Southwestern itself has it so many institutional scholarships you basically apply at the end of the year for the next year and then if you make like top 30 percent or better school like pays for some of your tuition as well and so that's how i've had some of my tuition paid for as well and so you know there's options but unfortunately it does add more stress like there's been so many moments where i wish that i could focus on school but i'm like really stressed out about my finances um but i think like I mentioned earlier, that's just one of the things that I know I have to deal with. So just trying to make, you know, the best of it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's it's a real world, you know, concern, absolutely. Um, and it is it is very tough, um, but it does take a lot of industriousness. You know, I, I talk to students all the time and I say, oh, did you apply for this scholarship or that scholarship? And they're like, no, I didn't do it. And, you know, you just never know, um, you know, what the donors of those funds are looking for. And it, it may be you and you could be leaving money on the table. Um, there's also a lot of scholarships too that are available from a lot of other outside organizations. Um, the ABA has scholarships, the California Bar has scholarships. There's lots of different things and it does take a little bit more, you know, effort, um, but there are, there are some resources out there. Um, Sarai is also asking Fabiola if you could put some of the organizations and the scholarships that you just mentioned in the chat. Um, if you can just type those out really quick. So we have about four more minutes. So that's probably time for one final question. 
Um, if the audience has one for Fabiola, if not, I'll have something for us. But uh, I want to give anyone a chance to ask a question who would like to learn from one of our students. Oh, you type fast, Fabiola. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, the last question that I'll have for you, Fabiola, is has there been anything about law school, either law school itself or yourself in law school that has pleasantly surprised you? Um, yeah, I would say I think just knowing how much I'm capable of. Like, I feel like you hear a lot that law school is so hard, law school is so hard. And like, it really is. <laughs> like, I wish I could tell you otherwise, but it's just draining on so many levels. Like, and like I just mentioned, not even just with school, like life and other things. So um, I don't know, I think every year I'm like, wow, how did I get this, get through this past year? And just like learning more and more that I am resilient and, you know, we can do these things, I can do these things. Um, and like, I just really want to like mentor like others as well to be able um, to believe in themselves because I feel like I could have easily just not gone to law school as well. Like so many things could have gone wrong, I guess. Um, and so I'm just really grateful. I feel like every year I'm really like, wow, I did it. <laughs> so I think that's been the biggest thing, just like knowing how much I'm capable of. I think that is a wonderful place to conclude tonight. Um, you are capable of a lot of things. You have already proven that, and there are many more great things to come. Um, so I wanna thank you, Fabiola, for spending this time with us um, and sharing so candidly about your experiences and some of the highs and the lows. Thank you to our other admissions ambassadors uh, for your help tonight and your contributions. And thank you to all of our students and prospective students for joining us. Uh, we hope you found the information to be informative. Um, I see there's some email addresses dropping in the chat. Um, so feel free to grab those if you wanna stay in contact with Fabiola or any of our other ambassadors. And I will put my email in the chat as well. Um, we'll have some other events, of course, coming up for you in the next few weeks um, as we continue with the series in the fall. And then we also have our Southwestern Law Day event on Saturday, November 6th, um, which will also be held via Zoom. It'll be a mock law class um, and a panel regarding externships. So we hope you'll join us for that as well. So hope everyone stays safe and stays well, and we will see you next time. Thank you, everyone.